Let them know what's happening. And welcome to another installment. And this is, of course, the Homeboy Sports Network on the Active Network with Mike Johnson. This is Jose Gutierrez, Jr., Mike's somewhere in Ohio, traveling around celebrating Buckeye victories. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm just here, y'all. <laughs> let's let's get into it. We have a lot to catch up on, Mike. Let's start the show. What, what do we have first? Yeah, well, let's wrap up with yesterday. Let's wrap up with Big Bang College Football yesterday. Um, we had some notable games. We had Notre Dame in Georgia, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, and uh, your alma mater, UCLA, one of your childhood favorite teams. Yeah. And uh, your alma mater, uh, Washington State, the Cougs, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's get uh, let's jump right into it, man. Let's start off with the. Uh, did you? Uh, uh, what were your What were your initial thoughts on the game against Notre Dame in Georgia and the uh, between the hedges? Um, I think both teams are overrated. First, let me just start with that. These are name programs. We talked about this earlier in the um, episodes of this program where you have name alone programs. And based on name alone, Notre Dame starting to 2-0 and Georgia starting to 2-0, the national championship contenders. However, this game uh, showed a lot of heart. There was a lot of back and forth, a lot of Notre Dame's effort to try to come back and win that game. Um, it said a lot. I think both of these teams are actually contenders. And I think Georgia was able to, well, obviously they were able to withstand Notre Dame's rush to come back and, and come away with the victory, a big victory for the SEC. Because, again, this is a name alone game. The schools, Ohio State, Michigan, Bama, if they are not even good, name alone, they get recognition. And both of these teams, I think, earned it with that performance yesterday. What do you think? Yeah, no, I would agree, man. I think that uh, Notre Dame showed a lot of heart going down there, playing in um, in Athens. And they normally, uh, you can tell the improvement of Notre Dame. Normally, this is a game where Notre Dame will come to a school like, uh, let's say, Alabama or Georgia, Ohio State, and just get uh, mollywhopped. You know, I've seen it happen before, and they've been uh, gotten a lot better. They're not where they need to be yet. Um, you know, they can still, uh, you know, last year they played they played Clemson, and uh, when they had a lot of time to prepare, you saw what uh, you saw what that outcome was. But I don't think anybody was really beating Clemson last year, so uh, I yeah. wouldn't necessarily hold <laughs> necessarily hold That's that one of the greatest teams ever. <laughs> yeah, the greatest man. Greatest teams ever, easily. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, nothing to hang their hats on. Uh, they'll be right there in the mix. Um, they're going to need Georgia to lose two games in order for them to be in that top four. Uh, but they'll get a lot of they'll get a lot of points for it. I'll say well, this: they'll get a lot of, they'll get a lot of points from the uh, the committee when it's time to choose the top four for having going down there and playing that game as competitive as it was, and that was kind of a you know. It really was a coin toss. So, and among the one loss teams, just to put things in perspective, they'll get a lot more consideration for the playoffs in Central Florida. Oh yeah, yeah. If it was between Central Florida, even though Central Florida lost, or did they? Did they? They lost to Pitt, didn't they? Oh, that's, yeah, that's they what did. I mean. They both yeah. have one loss. And no oh yeah, you can forget. The only yeah, one to get any consideration. With yeah, one loss. yeah. It's cool, like Central Florida has got to beat teams by fifty. Every yeah. game with no no flaws for them, they'd be considered. So yeah, no. they could be undefeated um, and beat teams by fifty. There, you know, and I, I'll just say this real quick because that touches on a subject that bothers me. They're a program team. Their program has to be undefeated for more than two seasons to get consideration for the third season. Is yeah. there any, any credit for their in season play? But Notre Dame can be six and five one season, nine and three the next season, and eleven, twelve and one the next season and they're like you know, let's get they're, back. Yeah, they're back. They're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're right, man. You're right, man. So uh speaking of schools with just name recognition, yeah. Um what are your thoughts on the uh the Michigan Wolverines? I mean, I take great pleasure in watching them struggle. Um 
<laughs> but but we want to we want to see Michigan good because it means so much more uh, to the Big Ten and it just means so much more to college football. But over the past. Since Jim Harbaugh's been there, I mean, they really haven't been able to get it done against top, uh, you know, top ten teams. I think they're one in uh, – we need a statistician. I think they're one in seven or maybe even – probably the record's probably even worse than that, uh, I would imagine, um, against the top – they got the top echelon teams when they either go on the road or uh, have the school come to the – uh, to the big house. And they just, uh, Jim Harbaugh is a great coach, but it's just not fair. Well, and, let me say, uh, oh, go ahead. yeah, and I, you know, I don't necessarily, I, I don't think it's Jim Harbaugh because he is a good coach. I mean, he's, he's proven he took the Niners to the Super Bowl, um, was a, uh, a blackout shortage of being the winner <laughs> and, uh, of the Super Bowl. And then, you know, he did some great things at, uh, Stanford and and San Diego State. So I, just, you know, just San Diego, not even State. The the yeah. the, the lower the FCS team. He, he built programs. Yeah, yeah. So I don't necessarily think it's him. I think it says more about what's going on in Midwest football in teams in states like Michigan and you know the surrounding areas. I, I think they're not getting the recruits. Um, that they should be. So I don't necessarily think it's him. I just think it's the, the caliber of player. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I think it's all regional right now. And the South is, uh, he doesn't have a strong, it doesn't seem like he doesn't have a strong pipeline um, from other places uh, to get the caliber of athlete that you would need there. Well, I, let me say this. <clears throat> In today's chain, our last game, Georgia, Notre Dame, Georgia comes up victorious 23-17. Notre Dame is 1-18 versus top five opponents since the 90s. Okay. Mm. So this, these are interesting statistics because these are powers, uh, and they're, they're, these are why they're name alone programs, okay? They're not even competitive in the best competitive games, the, the, the top matchups with their rivals. So when we look at Michigan, my take on it is this. He, Jim Harbaugh is a program builder. We're in the era of spoiled brat attitude. And so people are not satisfied with 9 to 11 wins right now. Everybody thinks they can win the national title every year, and it's unrealistic. Jim Harbaugh is building Michigan's pride back. They had to go through Brady Hope, Rick Rodriguez. You know, I don't know who these coaches are going to our snowy and cold region uh, areas and trying to install pass-happy offenses. <clears throat> okay, this, this is not workable in the Midwest. Uh, especially when November reaches uh, us. When we get into November's month, you need to run the ball. <clears throat> and Rich tried to throw in that pat. He dismantled the program. Let me just say that. He dismantled the program single-handedly during his tenure. And Jim Harbaugh is still rebuilding it. The Michigan pride is now evenly distributed to Michigan State up in Lansing. And so they they're getting – equal caliber talent, I would say. And if not, their performance on the field is overshadowing some of Michigan's uh, uh, fame and reign over the state of Michigan. And so I, I just think uh, you, you have to be patient, which the, the, the market and the society is not patient. But you're not going to get – my final word is this, he's not on the hot seat, two reasons. Um, he shouldn't be on the hot seat, two reasons. Who are you going to get that's going to out-coach Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. Now, that's one. I just want to answer. Urban Meyer's not going to Michigan. Okay, Never. I don't see that. Who are you going to get who's going to out-coach, out-pride, out-love, out-earn the face of the Michigan people? Okay? Wolverine Nation. Now, let's not just glance past Wisconsin. I know they were punks in the 80s in the very early 90s, but Barry Alvarez built a monster with the Badgers up in Madison, okay? They are not pushovers by any stretch of the imagination. And they were playing in Madison, and Wisconsin is now a morph of the new Nebraska. Their offensive lines are dominant every year now. Bang. That's all I'll say. Uh, Michigan could have had a better showing. 
But I'm not disappointed with that loss so much. Um, maybe the way they lost is disappointing, but I'm not surprised either. Wisconsin's no pushover. They could beat Ohio State. Yeah, they can. They, they they very well can. I mean, it was a, this game that game last year uh, when you know, Michigan played uh, Wisconsin. It was a uh, it was a lackluster performance by both teams. It was a, like, well, you know what? No, I would say Michigan's defense was so good last year. I will say, uh, at least we thought they were. Um, they were so good against so many Big Ten teams last year. Um, they really they really stifled that Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. offense, man. And so I just think it was one of those games where you got them coming back to your crib. It's a revenge game. You know what I mean? You had something to prove. I mean, I, my contention is that Michigan will probably end up somewhere winning 10 to uh, 9 to 10 games and again, their season will will hedge, uh, will rest in, you know, what happens in late November, uh, January. That'll be the success of uh, how Michigan football is determined, you know, and if they beat us, um, you know, that will go a long way. And if they happen to win their bowl game, it will go a long way. So um, now I was a little disappointed on the showing because you need Michigan to be good. Um, you know, that just helps the, that just helps the whole Big Ten when they're good. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, we'll, we shall see what happens with the team up north. But, uh, hey, I, I – I still enjoy it any time they lose. <laughs> so let's 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 even upgrade the conversation. How about when your team wins? Now there is some teams we're biased about on this program, and there's one for you, and it's called the Ohio State Buckeye Nation. And I, I was disappointed. I called you in game while this <laughs> you How do you me. have pride about yourself picking on the little brother of the state of Ohio, Miami? In a seventy-six to five victory, and you're still throwing the ball up fifty-something points. Uh, all you, right, I'm, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> first of all, we pulled the starters in yeah. the third quarter. Everybody says that, okay. And we know we pulled the starters, but here's what the I'll second say: second string here's, is better than their first string. Now go on. No, here's what I'll say, man. I, I think what <laughs> happens is you have to. Here's what I'll say: you can't, even though. You have to let your – you have to let those kids that have no experience, you have to let them get real live reps, man. And You can't take it light on a team. Um, I think it's good for both teams, right? You know what I mean? Those, those kids that are out there for for Miami, they're getting real live reps, and that should probably go a, a long way playing a school like Ohio State when you get to – when you have to go, you know, back to your conference in the MAC. Um so they should be yeah. great for the ass. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, and then the, and then the same. And then by the same token, man, you got to get your kids uh, that are those sophomores and freshmen that don't play. You have to get those guys real live reps. You know, you're not just there just to to run the ball and run the clock out, man. What what if Justin Fields goes down and then we, and we have a situation where we got to put in the backup? You know what I mean? And all we we haven't done him any justice just because we want to save. Hey. We don't want to pick on. Uh, no, uh-uh. that's not how it works, man. Hey, look, brother, your backup's got a highlight of the day on Sports <laughs> last night. Okay, <laughs> one of the great catches of the college football Saturday was uh, against. Yeah, that kid's a, that kid's a freshman. Man. He was the number two recruit coming out of uh, number one receiver, <laughs> number one receiver, or number one or number two receiver coming out. Uh, last year, so um, yeah, no, we're happy to see that. <laughs> uh, we're happy to see him make get some shine on it. That'll go a long way. Uh, in builds the- confidence in the program, doesn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You, you know, you got kids coming out. They, hey, man, they want to get on the field. They, you know, their parents came up to to watch them play. And hey, man, you want to see your kid shine when he's out there. So, no, nah, hey, um, no, you won't see any. Uh, you won't see any negative comments. For me, even though that score was it got out of hand quickly, um, but hey, there's a there's a method to it. So I'm not uh, you don't tell Alabama to shut it down. <laughs> they don't tell Clemson to shut it down. So no, nor should we. So, uh, but anyway, let's uh, speaking of alma maters, man. Let's get back to. Uh, oh. Uh, 
There we go. Your let me just let me just, let me just tell you. Let me just tell you. I uh, after the game last night I had some friends that were in town. Uh, old roommates from college. You know, we we ended up getting it in on some uh, you know old stomping grounds on campus. But uh, I came home to a game that was, looked like it was a. I think it was a twenty-eight point game. When I got home, when I got home, and yeah. I uh, I cut it on, and I got up to grab a little, uh, you know, late night, uh, late night snack because I'd had some libations <laughs> throughout the day, and uh, I get up and I come back, sit back down on the couch, and lo and behold, it's an eighteen point game. I was like, oh, this is the game, and then I went to use the restroom, and they had scored again. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what the hell? Just happened, man. I, Thirty-two points, Jose. What I mean, what? Yeah, what, yeah. What happened, man? This is why you need a four-minute offense. Every team should have one. Um, it was careless football. That that's how I could sum it up. And the disappointing part is, I'm a sincere and passionate fan about first UCLA. Now this is odd because my I'm from that area. I'm from LA. Born, raised in California, and in Washington, and my alma mater is WSU. There's no other team I would choose above WSU. They were very close. I rooted for UCLA at my first freshman game when uh, Bruins came to play the Cougars. And, uh, I know. So, just a little background of what this means to me. Now, I, I, I'm not a fan of Chip Kelly. Uh, let me say that. But this for UCLA to change their program trajectory, but it is not that they played so great. It's mostly because WSU played so careless. So it's not a real reflection of like, yeah, they turned the corner. I don't believe that at all. I believe it was an awesome effort to take advantage of all the mistakes the Cougars made. They fumbled three times in the second half, and special teams, they had some gaps there. Uh, there was some drop balls, of course, the fumbles. And still passing when you have the lead, uh, you pay for that. This is what that offense, you know, when you have the air raid, you need another jumbo package. You need a package where you can run the ball and run some clock, and they didn't. And this is what us in Pullman and alumni from Pullman call cooking it. <laughs> this is a game. WSU is notorious for winning games they should not win. They should not win and losing games that they should win. And this is a game, UCLA was terrible. They, they looked terrible. They lost to San Diego State. They lost to, uh, we lost to uh, Cincinnati. We lost to, we got killed by Oklahoma. And this would have helped. I would have loved if WSU would have won this game because I think UCLA season sucks already. They look so bad. And they're so young, but... They got a victory out of this, so hopefully UCLA starts winning now because that would be a waste of our season. The Cougars had a chance to get yeah, they had a chance to play. Yeah, they had a chance to do some things in the pack in the pack twelve. Yeah. So uh yeah, yeah, man, that was a that was a tough loss, man. That was a well a lot of betters weren't happy. That was a that was considered a bad beat <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> they lost a lot of people Cougars lost a lot of people some money. Uh, yeah. last night. So you're not the only the people in Pullman are, are the only people uh, <laughs> upset. Um, record, so yeah, man. Record-breaking night, though. Record-breaking night of points scored in one game in regular regular regulation time, not not overtime. 130 points, 67, 63. Ridiculous. That's wild, man. That is wild. So, but. Uh, yeah, man. Sorry for sorry for that loss for you, man. That's uh, that's a heartbreaker. But uh, and that kind of derails the season. That I mean, that's one that that's one that, that's going to be tough to come back from because when you get into, let's say if uh, let's say if Wazoo ends up, you know, as a one loss team and they have an opportunity, you know, this would be a situation <laughs> where they're a one loss team right. and it's Wazoo and Notre Dame. You know, for that fourth spot, let's just say hypothetically. And, and who has a better loss? Yeah, yeah, who's got a better loss? And that, that's a bad loss, man. That's a bad. They were up thirty-four. I just can't. You know, people. I just can't get over that. So I can well, totally this, see that. 
it, I can tell Georgia you. will probably have the better loss regardless if UCLA starts winning and wins eight or nine games because Notre Dame lost to Georgia, which gets yeah. you points. That's okay to lose to Georgia. UCLA, even if they <laughs> won eight or nine games, they'd be like, they're not Georgia. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's a, that's a bad loss, man. So, um, yeah, man, so that wraps up college football. Uh, for this week, there is. Uh, I think there should be some more, some better games on the slate next week. We shall see. Um, well, big shout to Appalachian State pulling out the victory over North Carolina. They always do this every so often. I remember that Michigan. Hey, did you, did you you know what I saw last week, man? That I was that I was floored. I saw it? the I saw the Citadel beat Georgia Tech. Yeah, but you know the military boys ain't playing, man. The, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Citadel, even the smaller of the four. Uh, they fight. They fight. Yeah, man. they it's fight, man. Don't but don't that, shit, that, that shit, that shit, that shit happened, man. No, oh, man, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a, You see the Citadel on your schedule. You're like, oh yeah, this is. Uh, everybody gonna get some burn today. Yeah. Not <laughs> yeah, that day, not, not that day. No, oh, man. No, oh, man. I, I love so, the toughness. That's a good reference. But I love the toughness of the academy programs because they, they show you. You still have to put helmet on helmet and pads on pads and you still have to turn and fight. But that's yeah. what the, all those offenses are the same. I don't know what the Citadel runs, but Army, Navy, Air Force still run option set. And they, you know, this is what you can rely on with the what body I, on body. You know, what you know, I don't understand. What I don't understand, Jose, is why in the option and for Army, why does that guy get so low? Get so low? Yeah, when he takes the ball from the center. Next time you next time you have oh, to see the Army quarterback. play. The yeah, why? Well, it, it, he, their quarterbacks are typically 5'8 to 6 foot, maybe 6 foot. <laughs> he's so he's, it's a, he's it's right in that little. dude's his face. is right in that dude's ass. Man, every time. Yeah. Well, once, once they snap the ball, you can't see him. And oh, yeah. As a defender, you know, that that's a disadvantage already, man. So if you have a talented quarterback like Terry, the quarterback, I think he's either Army or Navy, but uh, awesome speed, quickness, and decision making. You know, you already lost two yards on those things alone, those factors alone. So that's what Army's counting on. That's that low snap receiving position. Just to just to answer your question. All right. Well, let's transition into football players with discipline. Um, and the <laughs> teams like oh, Navy, yeah. Army, yeah, and the Citadel. Let, let's talk about a player uh, in the NFL oh, let's who, has no, who has no discipline. Uh, I have some thoughts on. I mean, don't get me started. I, you know, I am going to get you started on this one, Jose. Uh, I'm gonna, but I'm going to I'm going to time you on this one because uh, <laughs> uh, I know you got a lot to say about this man. Keep and, me disciplined here because I could go on. I could have a two hour show on this. <laughs> yeah, That's man. I just think here. I'll, let me go first. I just think that. Um, and say his yeah, name. We're professionals here. Say who we're talking about right now. You no, know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Antonio Brown, man. I, I think there's a lot of things that are wrong with that guy. I think, and I'm not making excuses for him whatsoever, man. I just think that he got to a point where he, he, you know, I've had this conversation with a few of my friends, man, but. Uh, he got to a point where you know he he felt that he could he, he felt that he was untouchable you know because he was so good and he felt that he he was untouchable and anything any and everything that he did he thought to himself that I can do whatever and there be no repercussions there'll be no uh, there's no way I'm gonna get caught you know and I think when I said this before man uh, um. Yeah, he just had no. He just he had no. He, there were no consequences for him, man. And he didn't think there were ever going to be any consequences for him. Um, now there are. You know, he lost out on thirty million dollars this year because he acted an ass, and that wasn't even about the money, man. It was just more because he was just a bad person, man. Um, he was just a straight up, uh, you know. I don't even know, man. But his actions are. He did some asshole actions, man. And so I can only go off what you, you know, what you show some, what you, you know, what you, what you show people, man. So yeah, it's, it's, it's some serious asshole actions, man. So that's my take on it, man. I have no remorse for the dude. Um, you know, he treated those, 
you know, he treated those women like that, man, which is uncalled for, man. And uh, yeah, so he got what he he got what he deserved, man, on, from that standpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you go ahead. I know you I know you had some ether form, so. I do, and as for women in polite society, I agree with your point. And these um, athletes and celebrities are also in the midst of some sack chasers and hood rats too. But that does not excuse you, and you're being observed as a public personality. So just to um, make it clear, if people will say, uh, you know, they want to be acceptable to society, but your behavior shows otherwise. You can't only be um, a so-called, try to be a good person, like you tried to claim to appear. Yeah. Well, you're offending people at various levels. You know, we have these females who are coming out with allegations and some receipts. And now let's talk about who holds his future in their hands. You have owners corporations, people with the money that you claim to need and want, but I don't believe either because, you know, there's a few things he did, Antonio Brown, and this might have to do with never having nothing in life. I don't know his how he was raised. I don't know who raised him, if anybody did, because I can't tell what his behavior is. pretty disgusting, and it reeks of privilege and never being held to any consequences, no matters, no respect, no principles. And he may have these things, but when you're spoon-fed, like some athletes I know who were never encouraged or trained or, or, or guided and mentored to take an SAT test but still went to college and ended up in the pros, when you're one of those kind of athletes, you don't know the, the meaning of the word no. People will find a way for you to get on the field or help you benefit them. They will use you. And so... I don't know the scenario behind Antonio Brown's antics, but I know he's not a slave. So when you're talking about give us, give me, I want, I'm free, I'm free. He's certainly yeah. the free now. He's hey, certainly, oh, yeah. free. He's certainly <laughs> yeah. free now. And I don't appreciate the insinuation of the word free when the Raiders were taking care of you as best they could uh, with a, a $30 million contract as well. Coach Gruden, you're going to put his, uh, voicemail and conversation online so the world can hear it, that's disgusting to me. And it's a federal crime. You can only record somebody's conversation without their authorization in Texas and New York. Okay? That's the crime. So well, apparently, a, well, apparently he said he asked him if he could record it. So, that's what and he, he said. said huh? Yeah, he said it was okay. So Okay. Well, I know Coach Gruden's not going to hold him to the fire. Coach Gruden, don't, he's not – Concerned, so I don't know if he did or not. Actually, but Coach Gruden would not be like, "No, I didn't say." I don't think he would make a big deal of it because he didn't make a big deal of anything. He yeah. just wanted to play. This this was the sentiment that was publicly displayed. So he has no argument calling that um, the general the, the general manager was it Mayock? Yeah, Mayock? yeah. So calling him a cracker. Uh, this is my point. Calling him a cracker was a total insult. And I say this, and this is my words, it's not to reflect Homeboy Sports Network or Active or Mike Johnson. These are my words. The word cracker actually comes from someplace, okay? It means something, and it is not meant to reflect on all white people. But in the history of our country, uh, black people called the cracker man the person with the whip. That's where the word cracker comes from. So it's the person who cracked the whip on the backs and bodies of people who are enslaved here. And so when you use that word, marginalize that word, and play with that word, you know, that's an earned title. That's my take on it. That's somebody who's a real demonic force, a wicked person who yeah. hurts people. And uh, I think it's a misapplied word, and, you know, people should be more informed on earning titles like that. That title belongs to some people, but not that man. He's all over media and, and all public reports. Uh, explaining how he just wanted Antonio to play. He just wanted him to be prepared. He just wanted, you know, he's accommodating him at all different levels. Yeah. And for him to get online and, and act a fool, talking about, I'm free, I'm free, Grandma, I'm free. <laughs> you know, I don't know how old his grandmother was, but I know when my grandmother was born, black people couldn't vote. 
So when you're playing around with words like that, I take that super serious. And I know there's different levels of, uh, you know, people of color's experience in this country, and, and we come in the room with different levels of understanding. But I don't appreciate it, man. That man should have money in his pocket in Oakland, and not just because that's my team, but he had a job. So here's what I'll say wrapping this up on him because there's so much more I could say. When you go belly up, when you make noise this loud about yourself and people start raiding on you and you're defenseless to the public's opinion who are mm-hmm. starting to raid on you, you open yourself up for the criticism people wouldn't have used against you. I believe the women would not have come out at this time had it not been so easy to right now. And it's easy to because of him opening his big mouth and making noise out of nothing. He's making noise out of nothing. And he's these women are obviously seeing the media rail on him, organizations railing on him, society in general railing on him and not appreciating, not being amused by his antics. And it made it easy for them to come out and present their cases of how they feel like they were mistreated and everything's sticking. Everything's <laughs> sticking to him now. And so yeah. I, I feel um, like a what a waste is what I feel. Um, and who's your mentor, man? Who's your guide? Who's who's your advisor? No, man, he doesn't. See, who, who's videotaping you running through your yard talking about uh, things like that's the thing to do? Because get rid of them. But well, see, who who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna get who's gonna say something to him? You know what I mean? If he doesn't want to hear any of that, like well, what can you? T- that's what I'm saying. Like, what, he's thinking to himself, like, what I've done this far has worked right. for me. You know right. what I mean? I, he, he's put together who, a hall of fame. Who? No, for him, he's thinking. You know what I mean? He's like right. Antonio Brown's thinking. What could you say to me? That's that's uh, that I don't already know. Like I've put together a Hall of Fame career. You know, I came from a six round pick from Central Michigan, and I tore. You know, I, all I needed was an opportunity, and I set the league on fire. And now I got all this money. So, what could you possibly say to me that I'm going to respect because what I've done thus far has worked? Well, I think so. I think, so I, why okay. do I need a Why do I need a mentor? You know, you see what I'm saying? Like that's that I do. Seems like, that seems do like that's, that's, that's the that's that seems like the mentality. Yeah, but he does. But but so again, I don't want to like psychoanalyze people. So I fucking hate when people do that. But but you know, on the outside looking in, you know, this guy he's like, well, you know, I, I, everything I've so far I've, at the Midas touch, everything I've touched is turned to gold. So what can you possibly say to me that you know that that I need to listen to. What can well, you show a, me? What can you show actual, me? There's an actual answer because everything you're saying is right, but it's only worked for him. It's only right. worked for me. And now right. when you have vested interest from multi-billion dollar organizations, Pittsburgh, uh, Steelers of the NFL, Oakland Raiders of the NFL, New England Patriots of the NFL, and other sponsoring corporations, companies, and personnel, it ain't about you. But, he, you but, he, to, but he doesn't. He, he, he. It seems like he's thinking like, well, my my skill is so great that you guys need me. Right. And, he's thinking that. Yeah. He's like, you need me. My 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 talent and my skill is so great. What he doesn't realize is, um, uh, we don't need you. You know what I mean? We get somebody. We get somebody here look just like you, man. Play <laughs> just like you. Yeah. And we don't have to. We don't have to deal with all the bullshit. So no, we don't need you. And see that the NFL will humble you real quick, because um, they will they will cut you. They don't give a shit. Everything is in their favor, man. Like these yeah. teams set up like everything is in the team's favor, the owner's favor. No guaranteed contracts. You're kind. Con- you were set to get five million on Monday. We cut you on Friday. Come on, <laughs> so you Come don't on. get that money anymore. Everything is designed. Look, it's not a but yeah. Not done, you're not. No one's that great. But the league, <laughs> the league will survive. Has been here before you, and it will be here after you. And you'll yeah. be a foot. You'll be a footnote. You'll be a footnote in the hundred year history of the, of uh, NFL football. 
Well, and, and it could have been. Could be a could have been. Yeah, yeah, it could have been, man. He was so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll you, you'll be a you'll you'll be a story now that we tell at the rookie symposium. Mm. Wow. That that's what you that, that's what you'll be. Don't uh, be hey, don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be that guy. Well, you know, Mike. Unfortunately, he is that guy, and that's very disappointing. It's, it's disappointing because there's still room to learn and humble yourself. And he thinks he's in the right, according to all his public comments. And I never shook this man's hand or looked in his eyes in person, but I do know his willingness to act a fool on social media. On I'm free, all this type of stuff. He's he got his wish. He's free. You know, and he probably would end up in the XFL or some other subpar league because – and actually, you know, hold on. Adam Schefter reported that there are NFL teams interested in him. And I just wonder who wants cancer in the locker room because you're going to invite it. And there becomes a point where the talent and the principles of a person begin to be imbalanced. And his principles apparently – you know, for me, it's true because I just I would I'm glad he wasn't on the Raiders after he did that. I'm like, you don't even want somebody. I don't want somebody who doesn't want me. I don't want to be with somebody like that. Right. In any kind of relationship. You know, I definitely don't want that. And some teams are interested, but I can see him in the XFL and stuff. And he's trying. To, he was just tweeted today about, well, you know, when is, I hope the NFL PA uh, chimes in on this because these owners could do anything they want. You know they're not trying to pay him. <laughs> yeah, well, he probably yeah he makes he does make a point, but the yeah they, yeah, they no he's indefensible. Like, like no, no, no. I'm saying uh, I'm saying this. I'm saying yeah he makes a point that the owners could do whatever they want. But guess what? <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no they can. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you 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 can't do whatever you want. Unfortunately. Um, so yeah, you're not afforded that same latitude. Yeah, it's not the, it's uh, not the same, my man. Uh, yeah, unfortunately for you. So um, yeah, they can do whatever they want. What do you see for him coming down the road? Mm, I'm gonna see. Uh, this is what I'll see. This is what I, what I think is gonna happen. He will end up probably not playing this. Well, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I think. He, there's a good chance he may not play this year. He'll play again, but I don't think he'll play this year. I think this is probably be, um, you know, this could be a good thing for him, man. It's something you love this much, to, you know. Maybe he doesn't want to play football. Maybe he doesn't, you know. Maybe he's like, you know, I really don't, yeah, I really don't need this game. I really don't want to do this, you know. But if it's something that he really wants to do, and uh, it was taken away from him, um, something he loves to do. Uh, yeah, this will humble you real quick, man. This will humble you real quick. Let me let so. me let me put my uh, legal hat on and be precise, because nobody took nothing from him. Let me just say that clearly: no one took anything from him. He gave away everything, in my judgment. He gave away everything from the Steelers to the Raiders, and the Patriots decided, <laughs> you know what? We don't want you. We really don't want you. And he got <laughs> He got a score yeah. for them last week. Yeah, uh, they were look. They were fine before him, and they'll be fine after him. They, yeah, they're not. Uh, the Patriots aren't pressed. No, and they, they they know how to deal with problems. They've had enough of them in their organization, and they're probably just like we just don't want to take this on. This isn't worth it. And I want to add one last thing, man. This is a, a sign of the times, um, and I think like one of my favorite comedians who's embattled right now, Paul Mooney facing some terrible allegations of uh, sexual assault, which is just terrible to hear. He did, he's still a brilliant person, and he came with a brilliant quote, and it was, you know, he said, some people have the illusion of inclusion, and you think you're part of. And I just think, uh, you know, to my ancestors, to a time when, uh, you know, we knew, we were thankful for opportunity, Mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't see any kind of, graciousness or thankfulness for the opportunity this man had. Like, I don't know any people from where I come from. And I can't just say where I come from. I just My mentality and the way I was raised, I can't imagine just turning down $30 million 
without a principle, like a Colin Kaepernick type stand. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I can't just see tricking it off like that, man. Uh, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm good on that, man. You, you, I don't know where you're from you, doing that. Yeah, well, you know, even, people even defending if, him. People want to get his back. I'm like, okay. I'm good, man. Nah, that ain't tells ain't me. That, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, ain't nothing to defend there, man. He's behaving like an asshole, man. Yeah, no, nah, I can't tolerate asshole behavior. So, uh, no, I'm good, man. Like, no, nah, ain't, ain't shit to defend there, man. Bro, you was wrong. I saw those texts. Yeah, bro, you was wrong, man. So, uh, you got what you got. So, that is what it is. So, um, we'll revisit. Yeah, we'll revisit this, man. News develops, but this is just a, a ridiculous saga, man. It was totally insincere with the Raiders, and it ends insincerely. At this chapter, uh, with the Patriots being like cold, with his cold feet on you, man. We don't want to mess with you. Boom. So, um, uh, yeah, man. So, we'll, yeah, we'll revisit this. We'll see. We'll, we'll put. We'll stick a pin in this, and we'll see what happens. With it. We'll see how the Antonio Brown saga, uh, or saga, unfolds here in the uh, in the coming weeks. So we'll stick a pin on this, man, and we uh, we shall revisit this as there as new developments come. Um, but, uh, yeah, the last thing, man, was a big week in the NFL this week. Um, a lot of great games. Um, but I think actually, uh, the game of the day, everyone thought it was going to be the Chiefs and the Ravens, but actually the game of the day, man, was the Giants and Tampa Bay. Yeah. And, and, uh, look like, uh, Daniel Jones got his first start. Replacing Eli Manning, and there's a lot of, you know, I mean, I watched the game last week against the, um, uh, when the Giants played the Bills, and uh, it was sad to see Eli go out there like that, man, and look how he did. So I guess Pat Shermer had no choice but to go ahead and throw uh, uh, your the number seven pick overall into the out of the fire into the frying pan, and out of the frying pan into the fire, man. And then yeah. uh, he got his first win, man, and uh, he played well, came back, and uh, was a missed field goal from uh, <laughs> from uh, actually he scored the he scored the winning touchdown uh, on a quarterback on a quarterback run, and uh, gave the Giants their first year after uh, Saquon Barkley went out with an injured foot in the first uh, quarter, and he, he bought him back, man. And uh, got the first win and made their uh, make their uh, the GM Dave Gettleman uh, look like a genius. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we also everyone was wondering who the heck is this guy and what made you draft this guy. And, uh, he he did well, man. He uh, he balled out. He balled out of control. I think he had two touchdown passes and another another rushing touchdown. And uh, gave him their first win. And uh, this may be. It's not a great thing to come from this dude, man. I mean, I'm really – I could care less about the Giants. Um, the only time I really cared about the Giants was when LT uh, was on the squad and Bill Sims and uh, – what was that? Uh, Joe Morse, <laughs> number 20. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> Pepper Johnson. Yeah. Pepper Johnson, Phil McConkey. Yeah. <laughs> those yeah. are the those are the Giants that I cared about, man. I care less about these Giants. Bavaro, right? Bavaro. Yeah. yeah, Bavaro. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Bavaro. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, no. Oh, go ahead. I just thought this was a good win for him, man. He got a, you know, it, he was. Uh, I always like seeing uh, a player who gets booed in the draft <laughs> prove the day. Yeah, pr- prove the naysayers wrong, man. So, uh, yeah, no, it was overall, it was a good win, man. It was a good win for him. And, uh, we'll see what happens next week. And, um, uh, it was a really good win um, for my fantasy team because, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were throwing the ball over. Yeah, they were throwing the ball over the place. So. Uh, but, yeah, man. Uh, There's a few more games. Let me go over our sports ticker here for the Homeboy Sports Network. Um Houston rolls into L.A. and beats the Chargers 27-20. We have uh, New Orleans went up to to the clink in Seattle and beat the Seahawks 33-27. Uh, 
Uh, of course, Baltimore fell to KC and Mahomes always shining. Oh, well, stop right there. Pause right there. Did you right. see Lamar Jackson, that move he put on uh, that defender to get into the end zone? Oh, Lamar is. What do what, what you want? What, what are you surprised about with this man anymore? Like, people actually man. thought, are you crazy? Oh, my God. He might as well. He hit the. Uh. That was nasty, man. That was a nasty. That was a nasty. All right, keep going. That was just that, that was an unbelievable right. play, even though they lost. But keep I going. Can't wait as they continue to cultivate him into a pro style quarterback and let him work his Randall Cunningham magic on people, because mm. uh, he's he's so slick. He put some more weight on him so he doesn't get hurt with these hits. Uh, so let's continue. Miami, of course, gets destroyed by Dallas in Dallas. 31-6. Uh, Oakland offended in the land of the Vikings. Minnesota won 34-14. And uh, let's see, I've got to be a few more games here. Who else do we have? Any, any other matchups you're thinking of right now? We have the Rams trailing Cleveland live. 13. Yeah, I'm actually watching that game right now. It's in Cleveland. And, uh, and let me just tell you about the Cleveland fans here. And they're all they're all uh, uh, they're excited about this year, rightfully so. So, um, but yeah, they they could be a bit annoying at times. Uh, the Bengals lost to the Bills. What was the score? Seventeen to twenty-one. Yeah. And yeah, man. So overall, it was a overall it was a uh, solid week. A solid week three in the in the NFL. For the and, night. Actually, the Niners are undefeated. Oh, yeah, Niners are, uh, yeah, yeah. Ch- uh, Packers are undefeated with the new coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the season's getting off to a, a promising start, man. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, after the, after our uh, after the show wraps up, I'm gonna get back into this Cleveland game, man. Cause it looks like it's gonna go it's gonna go down to the wire here. Well, we wanted to have this special installment to catch up a bit with the football season. This is one of our uh, most popular, you know, segments of Homeboy Sports Network is football. So we can't forget the pigskin. And a uh, great conversation, Mike. We're going to have some more. We're going to follow up on this Antonio Brown situation and whatever the further developments come up. Any picks for next week? Any big games you're thinking of? Mm. No man, I gotta, I gotta go through, I gotta go through, and see what, uh, see what I'm Who's really looking out? forward to. Who, who's playing? Who's the Sunday night game next week? I think it's, uh, ooh, Dallas and um, Dallas and New Orleans. That'll be a good one. So I'm looking forward to that next week. Yeah, that should be a good game. That should set teams apart. New Orleans hanging in there without Drew. Yeah, yeah with Teddy. What, what a great backup to have with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, yeah, yeah. Love, his first win him. since 2000, 2015, so. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, my God, Baker Mayfield. What the fuck was that? Pardon <laughs> my French. <laughs> what the, he just, he should have seen this play. He tried to give the ball to Nick Chubb, and, like, he didn't, he didn't want the ball at all. Oh, my God. Speaking of the Browns, but it, have you seen Freddie Kitchens? Freddie Kitchens looks like a guy who says to himself, uh, you know, I really need to start eating better. He'll eat a salad and eat good for a couple of days. And then <laughs> as soon as he sees, as he sees a, a plate of wings, he's back in it. <laughs> and and don't, he, don't just start fat shaming people on my show. Yeah, that's, also, that's, 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 what Freddy Kitchen, that's what Freddie Kitchens looks like to me. And then when he's around a group of people, there'll be some good food around. He's like, nah, I've got to watch, try to watch what I eat, man. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know he wants to. You know he can. He, he, uh, <laughs> he can look like Gargamel if he wins. If he gets W's in Cleveland, it don't matter what. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what Freddie Kitchens looks like to me. Uh, the guy's he's concerned about his weight, and he'll try for a little bit, and then he just he, old habits die hard. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> shit. Um, speaking of old habits die hard, boy, Baker Mayfield is not accurate tonight, but I think it has 
something to do with uh, uh, the Rams' defense. So, yeah, which is finally we'll, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll. Uh, we will uh, we'll catch up on this game uh, this week, and we'll wrap it up with them with you with the uh, the Monday night game. Who's All on right. the Monday night? Who, who's on? Who's on? Oh, it's the uh, it's the Bears and uh, Redskins tomorrow night. Yeah. That should be a good game. Two of the legendary teams of the NFL, and uh, make sure you check for our podcast airing Thursday night, scheduled for Thursday night, and for Mike. Johnson. I'm Jose Gutierrez on the Active Network. Homeboy Sports Network, we're right here. And make sure you subscribe and like and, and tell a friend about the, the show if you're digging what we're doing. Yeah, tell them. Tell them. We need some more. Uh, we want more people to hear to, to hear this. More people need to hear this. It's good for you. Yeah, the real talk. The real talk on sports. And uh, yeah, we'll tell you why. Tune in this week. Stick around, and uh, have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great week. Homeboy Sports Network. We out. Peace. Put him on his back and let him know what's happening.